How many of you would consider yourselves leaders? Show of hands, please. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a big, fat bully. He was small, but loud. A yapper, no doubt. And flash forward a couple of years, he seems to be yapping in front of all of you right now. So what's changed? Rather, what's caused this change? Now, when I was in year nine, I was made vice captain of my house in the school student council. And at the time, I didn't see much beyond this very flashy badge and title. In fact, I was like, yes, I can finally be mean and get away with it. Thankfully, that didn't happen. What happened was my life changed. How? Now imagine expectation looming around you. Imagine you being required to be good. I wanted to be a role model. I wanted to inspire those around me. So first things first, I had to rid myself of my bad qualities. So that meant no more meanie. Thankfully, I learned the art of compassion. Now, just because I was a nice guy didn't mean I forgot how to talk. I, would, I still had a very big mouth. I knew it, my friends knew it, my peers knew it. But putting my big mouth to good use, I became somewhat of a speaker or a communicator. And as years went by and my leadership positions varied, from vice president of my, the literacy club, secretary general of MUN, head boy, house captain, and I learned a bunch of other skills, time management, stress management, organization, working in a team, under pressure. I realized that all of this has made me a leader. And now, all these skills I encompass are just because of that one extra responsibility. You know, when we're young, we're ripe. We absorb as fast as a parched desert in a rainstorm. We want to learn, we are hungry, but at this age, we're usually marked and scrutinized for our skills in numeracy, literacy, and science, or whatever the system deems important. And don't get me wrong, they are important, otherwise I wouldn't be able to be speaking here today. But we fail to realize the importance of soft skills, the importance of developing these soft skills, especially at this age, because people just expect us as young adults to have these skills fresh out of high school to slap onto our resumes. Now imagine if we worked on developing our soft skills. Imagine if we worked towards becoming better leaders. Imagine you walking into a job interview with the confidence of Kanye West, but you know how to tone it down and bring it back to the humbleness of the Dalai Lama. You know what you're capable of. You know you've got what it takes to convince that interviewer that that job is yours. You are self-aware. This is the essence of leadership. But then, if self-awareness is the essence of leadership, then why didn't many of us consider ourselves leaders? Are we not leaders? Are only a few of us leaders? Let me, in, let, me let you in on a little secret. Newsflash. We all are leaders. But then why didn't everyone put their hands up? Because of excuses. People make so many excuses to justify why they aren't leaders. And the first of that being is that we don't have a position. We don't have a title or a badge. And here's it, here's the thing. You don't need a position. You create and make your own chances. But even after understanding that, people still fail to understand, I mean, people still don't consider themselves leaders. Recently, I had conducted a student leadership workshop back in March of 2016 where about 50 voluntary registrants signed up to come and participate. And I'm sure they came in hoping to learn more about leadership. But 
Actually, I learned more from them that day. Perhaps there is an ideal leader. Perhaps there is one positive leader who is a constituent of a cauldron of skills that consist of communication, organization, teamwork, etc., etc., etc. But here's the thing. The recipe for each and every one of us is very different. For example, I started off with my base ingredients of communication. I had zero organization or stress management skills. But as time went by, I added a hint of compassion, a sprinkle of organization, a gallon of stress management, and here I am. Now, as annoying as my communication was, as annoying as my talking was, it, I, used it to, to, I used it to start my recipe off. I was aware that communication was my strength, but many of these students who attended this workshop weren't aware of their skills. A guy said, hey, I'm just friendly and I'm funny and I make my friends laugh. Well, what he didn't realize is that he is an efficient communicator, an efficient networker. There were a couple of girls who were passionate about the environment, passioning, passionate about helping the less fortunate. Some were just plain nice people, but they were shy. They didn't realize that their compassion translated into initiative. Some argued, hey, I don't have that natural take charge in me. I think I'm somewhat of an introvert. I don't think I could speak. Well, first of all, being a leader is not all about speaking. So many introverts I know make meaningful connections and know what to say, when to say, and more importantly, are better listeners than speakers. And as for the natural take charge, the natural talkativeness, that comes along when you start with your base ingredient. Now, I realized that each and every one of those students had a different recipe. All, of, all they needed to do was find their base ingredient, find their starting material, and work towards leadership from there. All they had to do was take initiative and take charge, be self-aware. Wait. Pause. Ali, you're saying everyone is a leader and everyone has these skills. Fine, agreed. But if everyone is a leader, then who's following? Play. Good question, Ali. Actually, one of my friends had asked me this question a couple of months ago, and it got the dials in my brain spinning. I thought long and hard to come up with an intellectual answer, and here's what I've got. Drum roll. If we're all leaders, then we're all also followers. Huh? Not the response you were hoping for, right? Well, let me explain. See, imagine each and every one of us as a part of a huge, big, well-oiled machine. Each of us is like an organism in an ecosystem. Each of us has a niche. And niche means a role to play. So in leadership, it could be President Barack Obama. He is the leader of the United States of America, but he cannot be the leader of the Catholic Church at the same time. All that means is that each of us has a different footprint. Each of us makes a different impact. So as varied as our recipes are, so are its effects. Now imagine telling this to a child, telling this to a young adult, a teenager at that age, Telling them that, yes, you can be a leader. Everyone is a leader. You just have to find that one skill of yours. Some of you must be wondering, yeah, what would it do for that child? Okay, fine, better social skills and an easy job interview. And for those of you who don't understand the importance of an easy job interview, think beyond these walls. Think of leadership as a channel for our thoughts before it gets too late. And what I mean by that is that as years go by, Youth are regarded as rebellious, notorious creatures when really we just have a different perspective. This perspective may be great, maybe not so great, but hey, it's not given enough importance, and I'll tell you why. It's because we don't obtain enough representation. But youth leadership, youth leadership is changing things. When we know we have a say and we get our messages across, 
we help society and the world take strides into the future. You know, there's this one girl. She was very young. She was attacked at a very young age. And if she wanted, she could have chosen to stay put, stay locked up indoors under security and not say a word. She would have been safe. But she didn't. She was no dignitary. She was no official. She was a regular young girl who wanted to go to school. And she spoke about something she was passionate about. And you know, you know how I know she was successful? You know how I know she's made an impact? Because most of us over here already know who I'm talking about. We know that Malala Yousafzai, being a young girl, has made waves around the world for women empowerment and education. She has sparked conversations. She has inspired so many people, all because she chose to use her voice. And she was no older than me or you. She was approximately our age. She was a young girl. Age is just a restriction that society has caged us in. It makes us doubt our own ideas and our own wisdom. But once we liberate ourselves and realize that we are in fact empowered by our own thinking, then we can get the world to look at us youth beyond our years. So let me tell you a story once again. Once upon a time, there was a boy. He spoke, about, he spoke for about 10 minutes or so, and he asked everyone he was speaking to, whether you're young or old, would you now consider yourselves as leaders? Thank you. <laughs>